three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. Good morning and welcome back to Lighthouse Live. I'm your host, Jordan Devitt, and I am so grateful that you have joined me this morning. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Before I do anything, I just want to say thank you, Pastor Dan. Going on to 45 years of ministry, I love you, Pastor Dan. I honor you. I honor your life as a minister. You've done so much work in the kingdom of God, and you've allowed this radio station, this message to be proclaimed um, all throughout the Chicagoland area and the world, and I just love you, and I honor you. And I also want to encourage each and every one of you this morning that God loves you, and He is doing something so special today in our world. And so today you've just jumped on to such an amazing, amazing message. Just share this program right now and allow someone to be able to hear the gospel because it's the easiest way for people to be touched and changed. And so the Lord impressed for me to speak about how God loves proactiveness in our lives. And how it's so important for us to be able to be uh, proactive. And so today I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of a different um, message that I haven't really preached. But I believe it's very important. And it's really um, a lot about wisdom. Using wisdom in our lives as believers. And so the Bible says in Proverbs 6 and 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise which having no captain, overseer, or ruler provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. You see, the Bible says, consider the ways of the ant. The ant is used in this particular passage in Proverbs um, as a very wise insect that can actually give us humans wisdom. And the reason for this is this species is smart enough to understand without a ruler, without a leader, without someone actually telling it to do something. It knows that if it does not get food and store it up for the winter, if it does not uh, prepare, that inevitably it will die. And so the ant takes the time in the season where it is uh, could be relaxing, in the season where It doesn't have to worry as much because it's warm out and it can get food at its pleasure and at ease. It goes and it stores up food for the time where it knows that it's going to be harder. It's very wise. You see, as believers today, I believe that God wants us to be able to be proactive and There are many people in the world, not us, but there are many people who we see who are constantly reacting to things. And we do not want to have to do this. Having to react in every circumstance is not a great feeling. It's not great. But if we learn to be proactive, we will not have to do this. We'll be able to always be in the position of having things work out better in our lives. But that means that we have to take these steps and do things in times where we think we should be relaxing. You know, I'll explain um, reactiveness like this, what reacting looks like. I was out eating uh, with a friend of mine and we were sitting there and this, uh, this man had, a, he has a whole family, a kid, and they, you know, showed me their bank account and I was a little bit confused why they did this, but they showed me their bank account and I saw it and they told me how they had to, uh, pay rent, and it was 
basically exactly the amount that they needed, but you know, they were in a position where that was it. And I thought to myself, well, you know, it may not be smart to be out doing things when you're in a predicament that, you know, you don't have the money. And I thought, if anything were to ever happen in this scenario for this young man, he would be in the position where he'd be in trouble. And I'd been there before. I've been in that position before. And so sure enough, something random happened. And this man was in the position where um, he had to be asking for money and whatnot. Why? Because he was being reactive. You see, reacting is this. It's always being in the place where things hit us and we have to scramble. And it actually, God does not desire for us to be like that. He doesn't desire for us to live like that. Not at all. He doesn't desire for us to always be in predicaments where we're sitting there anxious because we don't know what's next. And if we know that if something bad happens, we are in trouble. No, God does not want you to have to live like that. But what that means is that as believers, we have to live with proactiveness. We have to live being wise in situations and scenarios. We have to live showing God that we are good managers, that we are good stewards, that we do take care of what's given to us. And the way that we do that is we become proactive. Proactiveness is something that God actually desires for his children, for the people of God to have in their lives. That is why he actually says, consider how the ant plans, stores up. And here's the significant part of the ant. The ant has no leader who's telling it to do so. The ant has no one saying, hey, make sure you go and do this. Nope, no ruler. Yet indeed, it decides, hey, I need to do this, right? It knows. So for us, what, uh, what does being proactive look like? You see, the Bible says, in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, it says, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Now, this verse pertains to more than just being prepared spiritually, but being prepared in and out of season for everything so that you're not in the position of always having to react. Some time ago, I, uh, I made the decision that I wanted to get engaged, Right? And I knew, because I moved out once previously, that making this decision didn't just mean that I was, you know, fine and dandy and I could do whatever I want until I got married. No. Making that decision meant that I was going to have to plan, as a man of God, how to get my things in order. You see, I moved out before. And I'll just be very transparent. I moved out one time. I had $900 to my name. $900. And within about one week, I was pretty much so deep in debt, I was calling credit card companies to try and figure out how to get things and be able to purchase just food for me to eat because I was not proactive. You see... Being proactive means that in those times of comfort and convenience, you're still using godly wisdom. Now, this doesn't mean that you hoard, that you store up, that you are uh, anxious still. No, no, no. That's not what it looks like. But it does look like, hey, I'm putting this into my savings account. I'm, I'm preparing you know, I'm buying these things for my home when I see a good deal. And for me, that's what that looked like. 
And it was hard because I had to break habits. There were a lot of habits in my life that I needed to work on. But by the time that I actually got married, I was able to afford and be able to be uh, in a place where things were good for my home. But it was only through the wisdom that God had given us and that he gave me about being proactive. You see, God actually desires for us to be people who are proactive in our lives. In the seasons where we could be splurging money and doing things, whatever it may be, or getting things together. Become a man or woman of God today that takes the time to get things together for your life. That is proactiveness. Proactiveness is this. When there's situations where you know things can be worked on better, where things need to be taken care of, but you could be relaxing, you say, I'd rather take care of them. I'd rather get this done. I'd rather get this in order. That is what the ant does. And I believe that this morning, God actually desires for you and me to be able to become people of God who are proactive in everything that we do. He desires for that for us. So that's my first major point. If we do not prepare, if we do not take the precaution to be proactive, here's what's going to happen. If you fail to plan, plan to fail. If you fail to plan and get things together, then it's very simple. Just plan to fail. Without that planning, failure is inevitably coming. It's coming. No matter when it's going to be, it is coming. And it's surely going to be ahead of you. But through the word of God showing us today, we will not be people who fail because we will be proactive in what we're doing in our lives as believers. Now, the second point is this. God gives us warnings so that we can get ready, so that we can get ready. The story of Noah is a beautiful, beautiful story, a beautiful depiction about how we can get things together and listen to the warning signs that God delivers to us. Genesis 5.32 says this, After Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then Genesis 7.6 says this, Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came on the earth. You see, the Bible goes on to talking about how wicked the earth was during this particular time and how God was ready to wipe everyone completely out but that there was one man, one family that God considered um, to be right. He considered to be good. And so that those people, he was going to save. And so God said, listen, Noah, I want you to build this boat. I want you to get everything together. And Noah did. And throughout this time, Noah was building this boat. And people were sitting there living their life any type of way, um, being wicked. And I'm sure as they walked past Noah, they probably thought nothing of it. Why? Because they were spiritually unaware. You see, God gives us a warning. There was a long time in between Noah actually hearing from God and be building this huge boat. It wasn't just a little boat. Building this magnificent boat over years and getting all the animals together and, and putting things in order. And then when the flood actually came, here's what I want you to see and where I want you to see from. Don't be like the people who in the days of Noah thought nothing was wrong thought everything was good. We're never trying to get things together. Do not be like this. Be like Noah. When God gives you the warning, say, okay, 
I'm listening. You've got my attention. There are warnings in your life right now, now, spiritually, that you have to get together. There are things right now where you have been warned. God's given you clear evidence. Hey, you got to get this together. And you can't neglect what he's saying, what he's speaking, what he's showing you. You see, that is what happened in his day. And those people had to suffer and go through all of that because they neglected the warning signs. What are you neglecting right now? Maybe you're neglecting the fact that, you know, spiritually, you're not taking the time to be proactive, to work on yourself spiritually. Maybe that's what it is for you. Maybe for you, there are other areas of your life where you're not being proactive. And you're taking the time to chill. You're taking the time to relax. Listen, we'll relax when we're in heaven. Right now, there is kingdom work to do. There are things that need to get done for God's kingdom's sake. And so for us to sit there and sit there and sit there and, and not acknowledge any of the things, any of the warning signs, is just foolishness. God needs us to be wiser than that. If you see a storm cloud, you know there's a storm coming, right? So you would prepare for that, right? Every time here where I work, and I've done lots of uh, snow plowing, I've done lots of snow work, in my life, shoveling, all types of things. When we see that the storm is coming, we do everything to get prepared. We're buying the bags of salt. We're getting the trucks ready. We're getting the crew together. We're making sure everyone's got the boots, everyone's got the snow pants, everyone's got their their coats, hats, gloves, whatever you need. The face masks to stay warm, being prepared. Making sure, okay, we got everything together. Okay, we set the alarms. Okay, we're on watch. We're listening. We're watching. We're checking the news to see what's going to happen. What would happen if we just said, well, you know, when it comes, it comes, whatever. We would be in a terrible situation. What today are you doing to make sure that you are proactive That you're not just sitting there with your hands in the pocket, where you're not just sitting there expecting that everything is perfectly fine. No, no. Consider the ways of the ant. That's what the Bible says. The ant was wise enough to say, I will do this. Make sure that this is in order so that I'll be able to be okay. What are you doing today to make sure that you are okay in your life? And there's certain areas, certain things that we have gone on to not be proactive about. And then we get to the point where we say, oh, why did this happen? No, this shouldn't just, this shouldn't just come and be a shocker to us. Right? It shouldn't be a shocker that if we don't pray for so long that we feel like we're being harassed by the devil. Well, we've had all this time to be praying, but instead we're doing things that honestly have no spiritual value and we're waltzing around like, well, it doesn't matter. No, do not be like the people in the days of Noah. The Bible clearly shows us this. But it takes being proactive. That's what it takes. And so I'll close with this. Matthew 24, 37 through 39 says this. For the son or for the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and giving in marriage, right? They were doing whatever they felt like. They didn't, it didn't matter. They had no idea 
And until the, the day that Noah entered the ark, and they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Things shouldn't be a surprise to you any longer. They shouldn't be. I believe that God gives us the signs. He gives us the warnings. He uh, indicates us of what's next. But if we live our lives with no care, we live our lives with no sensitiveness to the spirit and what's happening spiritually, I promise you, this verse, as it shows us, will show up. It will show up. In the days of Noah, people did it. People were happily walking around, getting married, you know, eating and drinking, doing whatever they felt like. Oh, this is more important. This is more important. No, it's not. It's not more important. What seems like it's important, if it is not bringing you closer to Jesus, if there's no proactiveness in your life, it is not important. It's not important. Take that time. Take the time and prepare yourself. Prepare everything in your life so that if something, God forbid, did come, which we understand that storms come, trials come, things happen, we're ready. We're in a place where we're able to be able to take on the fight. We're able to be able to take on the storm. We're in position. We've got our knees bent. We've got things in order so that, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. It hit me, and I'm ready for it. But that only comes by being proactive. That is why God today loves people of God who desire and who work to be proactive. Work to be proactive. Strive for it. Search for it. Because I promise you, when you do this, you will see that God loves it and he's going to bless it. That's what Noah did. That's what the ant does. And that's what you're going to do today. God loves proactiveness and he desires for you to have it. So right now, I'm just going to pray for you all. Father, I just thank you that today you're releasing proactiveness in our lives. I thank you today, God, that we are like we're going to be like the ants, where we don't even need someone telling us what we need to do. But we know through the word of God, hey, I need to get this thing in order. Lord, give us the spirit to get things in order, to get things straight, to use godly wisdom in our lives, to embrace being people who are proactive. Father, let us not get too comfortable where we dismiss and dismiss and dismiss things that need to be acknowledged. Father, give us the heart of Noah to be able to listen to your warning sign. God, if you tell us to build a boat, we will build it. If you tell us, God, to do something, we'll do it. Whatever it may be, God, give us the spirit to be proactive in all that we do in our lives. We just thank you right now, God. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and we honor you with our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you right now, God. Amen. Listen, I am just blessed and so grateful that you have joined me and I'm, I'm so happy for what God is doing in our world today. You see, as much as people may be doubting, as much of uh, the things in the world may look bad, don't be focused on that.
Be focused on what's happening in the kingdom of God. Be grateful for what God has brought you from. Stay focused. God is bringing a revival in the world like we've never seen before. But it is for those who stay steady and steadfast in him. And so if people fall away, if people walk away, okay. But for us, in this house, we will serve the Lord. Listen, if you've messed up today, it is okay. God is forgiving you right now. But do not allow the enemy to try and condemn you. Stay focused. Stay engaged. God loves you. And listen, I'm so happy that you joined me. I love you all. Have an amazing, blessed week. God loves you. Stay engaged. Get your new book from Pastor Dan Willis, The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration today. Log on to www.danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.